If search engines can't figure out the structure of your page, they're less likely to show it to the right people. That's why using semantic tags matter. They help your content make sense, even without the visuals. In this lesson, we'll look at how to structure your site properly using heading levels, text tags, and frame labels. So everything is clear, readable, and easy to understand for both people and search engines. Before we dive in, let's quickly define what a semantic tag actually is. Simply put, it's just a bit of code that tells the browser what a piece of content is, not just how it looks. So instead of saying, make this text big and bold, a semantic tag says, this is a heading or this is a paragraph. These tags help search engines and screen readers understand the structure of your content without needing to see the design. Now that we understand what a semantic tag is, let's start by talking about one of the most important ones, headings. Headings are used to create a clear hierarchy on your page, and they're marked in HTML as H1 through H6. H1 is the most important. It's the top level heading, usually your main page title. H2s act as section headers beneath that. H3 break those down even further, like subsections inside a section. And it continues all the way down to H6, which is rarely used but exists if we need deeper levels of structure. Think of it like the anatomy of a book. H1 is the title, H2s are the chapters, H3s are the subheadings inside each chapter, and so on. Now, here's the big rule. Each page should have one H1, just one, clearly stating what the page is about. This not only helps screen reader users scan the page easily, it also helps search engines understand what's important and how your content is organized. In Framer, you can easily assign a semantic tag to any text by applying a text style in the properties panel. If you're not using a text style but still want to tag it properly, just scroll down to the accessibility section of the properties panel and choose the tag from there. This also applies to regular paragraph text. If you're styling something to look like body copy, make sure it's actually tagged as a paragraph because that little P tag tells browsers, screen readers, and crawlers, this is just normal reading text. And that matters a lot because when text is tagged correctly, screen readers can read it naturally and search engines can tell it's part of the core content of the page, not just some random UI label or heading. It also makes your site more consistent and easier to maintain in the long run. Now let's talk about frames, since in Framer, our layout is built from them. Just like text, your layout should also follow a clear structure using semantic frame tags. These include things like header, main, section, and footer, and they tell screen readers and search engines how your page is organized at a high level. Here's a good way to think about it. Header, is typically the top of your site, where your logo, navigation, or page title might live. Main is where the core content of the page goes. This is usually what people came to see. Section is for breaking that main content into meaningful chunks or topics. And footer is the bottom of your site, often with things like links, copyright info, and social media icons. To tag a frame, We'll select it and head back to the accessibilities property, just like we did with the text. But this time, we'll notice a few different options depending on the element type. We'll see the options tag, aria label, tab index, and Googlebot. For now, let's focus on tag. When we click it, Framer gives us a list of options to choose from, things like header, main, section, and more. This is where we decide what role that frame plays in the structure of the page and assign the tag that fits best. Before we wrap up this lesson, there are a few more semantic tags worth mentioning, even if you won't use them every day in Framer. Tags like UL for unordered lists and OL for ordered ones help screen readers understand that the content is part of a group and read it out easily. There's also article, which is great for self-contained content like blog posts or cards, and aside, 
which you'd use for things like sidebars or extra info that's related, but not part of the main content flow. And then there's div, which isn't semantic at all. Div is used when you just need a basic container, but if there's a more meaningful tag available, you should use that instead. Overusing div is a quick way to lose structure and clarity. You most likely won't be using these tags often, but it's still helpful to understand them, especially if you're collaborating with developers or other team members. So to bring it all together, the structure of your site is what allows screen readers to navigate it, and it's how search engines figure out what content matters most. It's the foundation for both usability and visibility. In the next lesson, we'll go deeper into how to describe individual elements like images and icons and how to use things like alt text and ARIA labels the right way. For now, just remember, structure isn't styling. It's meaning, and meaning is what makes your site work for everyone. I'll see you in the next one.